everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and for today's video I am going to be doing the least popular fantasy books that are on my TBR. So um, I got this video idea from Get Bookish is I think the name of their channel. Um, I was there I was watching their not a booktube newbie tag and they were talking about some of their favorite videos to make I believe and they made the least popular and most popular books on their TBR and so I was going through my shelves and I thought that this would be a fun idea and so I decided to kind of break it up by genre so we are talking about the least popular fantasy books that are on my TBR and then I think it would be fun to do a most popular and then also do the same thing for contemporary and whatever else you guys might want to see. Uh, so just let me know. I didn't go through Goodreads or anything and do it that way. It's just based on what I've seen and all of the videos that I've watched. So it's not like actual statistics. I could have done it that way, but I'm lazy, so I didn't. Um, but yeah, I have six books to talk about. So let's get started. The first one is one that I've seen a couple... I don't even think I've seen a couple people talk about this. Um, I've maybe seen it once, but it was one that I saw in the bookstore and was always really interested in, and that is The Shadow Queen by CJ Redwine. This is a fairy tale retelling store um, series. I think there are four books out right now, and the sequel was about Rumpelstiltskin, so I really want to read these. Um, I haven't read this one. This one is about Snow White, I believe, and Every time I read the synopsis, it's one that really intrigues me, but I always forget the synopsis so quickly, and so then I never end up picking it up. Um, but yeah, it's a Snow White retelling. That's really all I know about it. The cover is incredible, and all of the books in this series sound so incredible and have amazing covers, and so I really want to get to the first one so that I can continue on and read all of them, like the Rumpelstiltskin one, and there's a Cinderella one, and there's one called the traitor prince and i'm not sure what that's a retelling of but like that makes me intrigued even more so i think this is called the raven spire series but don't quote me on that the next one is one that i heard from murphy napier's channel and other than that i think i've maybe only heard one person ever talk about it and that is the great hunt by wendy higgins i got 118 pages into this one and i was really loving it and for whatever reason i set it down so i do need to pick it up this is a duology based off of the singing bone um but also i think the beauty and the beast it could be considered a retelling of uh this is about a kingdom that has a like huge monster on the loose and so the king essentially says okay like whoever slays this beast gets the hand of my daughter and you'll become king or whatever and so the daughter is fine with it she's like okay whatever I have to do to save my kingdom and some of the people that enter this contest are not in it for that they're just in it so that they can um like slay the beast and the kingdom won't be ravaged anymore um but nobody actually knows what the beast is they just know that it's been killing a bunch of people so it sounds really interesting there are a couple different love stories in it you follow different perspectives and like i said i'm not sure why i put it down but you know story of my life the third one on this list is one that i have literally never heard anyone talk about uh it was one that i saw the spine in the bookstore and was like that is a beautiful spine what is this book and so i picked it up read the synopsis, was very intrigued. I haven't read it yet, obviously it's on my TBR, um, but I am so freaking excited. I feel like it's going to be a light-hearted, funny book, and that is Love Struck by Kate Watson. Um, this is about a girl who is like a cupid in training and accidentally sticks herself with her own arrow and she falls in love with a mortal and she has to face the wrath of the gods that are her parents and everything else like that um because like i think she's made a lot of mistakes as a cupid in training um and she doesn't even want to do that i don't think so like I don't know. I did start this one. I got 24 pages in and it was pretty funny. Um, I just was in a reading slump so I never picked it back up but the cover was really pretty and it sounds super interesting. It's a very different take on Greek mythology uh, from everything else that I've seen so I'm excited to see how this author um, 
spins it and interprets it. The next one is one that I've seen two people on booktube talk about um, and I haven't read it obviously but the author is popular so it shocks me that not more people have read it and that is Half Blood by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Jennifer L. Armentrout is a very widely popular author. This series is again I think Greek mythology and there are also demons um, and I think that there is a love triangle. Um, other than that, I don't know much else. I think this is like a six book series. I am obsessed with all of the covers. Um, and I got it last year and I was super excited to read it and then I never actually read it. So this is a thing that really, really needs to happen. But this is a young adult paranormal book and I need to read it. I don't know anything about it because I haven't heard anybody talk about it really. But the reviews that I have seen for this the two that I saw were like rave reviews so I'm assuming it's good. <laughs> Next is one that I'm shocked I haven't seen more people about because I got so many ads for it on my Instagram before it came out like I was getting this ad like three or four times a day um, on Instagram. It was honestly kind of annoying but it is The Storm Crow by Kaylin Josephson. I haven't heard anyone talk about this. Um, I'm not really sure what it's about but the cover is beautiful. It's also a very short fantasy. It says a storm is rising and I think they have they have like the crows are gone and then these two girls find an egg and they're trying to protect it at all costs. Again, I've seen pretty good reviews when I like marked it on Goodreads. People were seeming to really enjoy this, which kind of shocked me because it's such a small fantasy, so I'm worried that it's not going to be able to develop. To develop. Holy crap, I can't talk. The cover is stunning and it sounds really interesting, so I'm excited. I don't know realistically when I will get to this, but hopefully soon. And then lastly is one that I have literally, I don't think, heard anything about it on booktube and that is through the looking or er, the looking glass wars by frank better this is a trilogy and i own all of them i finished this book and then i was i don't know where i was in the second one but i was in the second one uh this is an alice in wonderland retelling uh series and i think i was enjoying it but i don't really remember what it was about because i read it my freshman year of high school so i don't know if i'll ever come back to these hopefully um but realistically i have no idea uh i'm gonna keep them for a little while longer anyway i didn't know this was like this I never took the dust jacket off when I was younger, so I didn't know that the covers were like that underneath. That's cool. I like them. Okay. Um, anyway, I have no idea what this is about, and I haven't heard anyone talk about it, so there it is. Those were the six least popular fantasy books on my TBR. Let me know if you've ever heard of them or if they're like your favorite books of all time and I'm just crazy. Um, if... I put some new books on your radar and you're really excited to get to these. I don't know. Just talk to me. It's fun. Um, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope that you're all doing well reading mentally and otherwise. And I really hope to see you all in my next one. Bye guys.